I'm here about 20 minutes outside of Sfax in Tunisia in a grove of thousands, I think it's 12,000 trees from the beginning of the 20th century. I'm sitting under a multi-trunked 1,200 um, year old olive tree right here. This is one of them. Um, the beginning of the tree is far below us and we have 24 beautiful hand-woven Berber carpets handmade bread in the field with local olives, local cheese, uh, just an amazing time. Actually, this bread is done in the Sahara for the people who uh, go crossing the Sahara and when they stop they have to eat bread and they make fire in the sand, put sand on the fire, put the, the paste on it, the, the, the paste is without, uh, without yeast, and then put put again, they put again uh, sand on it. And they call it Khubz al-Milla. Khubz is bread, and Milla is the name of this, uh, of this uh, bread. And it's cracking, this is uh, it's soft and cracking bread. It's so, so nice to, to eat. I guess a dream I've always had, I have a place to just sit under a tree and just watch the day go by. Just uh, come out in the orchard and sitting under an olive tree and eating native food. Um, there's nothing better. But when we turned that curve and I saw this tree and the beautiful rugs laying underneath it and the tent set up and just this beautiful spread, I, I truly, I just took my breath away. It was awesome. The peasant life isn't so bad. You've got these beautiful trees, you've got great food, um, sunshine, a light breeze, it's, it's wonderful. It was really wonderful to taste food just like everybody else eats it here every day. I'm assuming all the workers eat this like that every day. As real as it gets, yeah. uh, uh, to come out here and well, find you. this waiting for yes, us, a little oasis with to. carpets and, the, and this just fabulous, fresh, healthy food that we were just saying, if you ate like this every day, you'd probably live to be 100 and very happy. Nice breeze, it's beautiful, unbelievable. Good food, good people, great olive oil, couldn't be better. I definitely didn't think this was going to be the end of our three-mile walk here, but it was worth every step of the way, and, you know, we really got to see the orchards, the people working. The tree must be um, young, always, always young. So everywhere we cut the old branch, and you can see how we do. So we're gonna leave in a few minutes to visit another region, which is uh, called the uh, Al-Amra region, situated in the northern part of this city, about uh, 40 kilometers from here. What we do in this refinery, we refine two types of oil, the crude pomace olive oil and the lampante olive oil, which is the product of the first press vat with lots of defects, either in taste or in acidity, with a very high acidity, so we bring it in here too. For the crude pomace olive oil, uh, it goes through four different steps. The lampante goes three, through three different steps. That one extra step is the de-waxing, which would takes all of the waxes out of the oil. As you can see, all the paper filters are actually dedicated. You'll see there is the filter for the organic extra version, the filter for the conventional extra version, one for the pumice, and one for the pure olive oil. relaxed mood with a clean mouth uh, with nothing to affect 
has the tasting uh, ability. All tasters are presented with those blue glasses, so uh, they are not affected by the color of the oil, because usually, and it happens to the best experts, they are affected if they see green oil, in their mind, it's gonna be stronger oil, while it's not. So this color in here, it hides the color, the color of the oil, so the taster is as objective as possible when in his uh, tasting. This is more interesting. Mmm. It has a flower. <clears throat> oh, nice. And more piquant. No. We eat an apple after. Because an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But a garlic a day keeps everybody away. So the NAOH, she will add a few drops. She will see what the level we did start at. And then she will start adding drop by drop by drop till we see the color changing and the color and the change of the color persists for 15 seconds and now she calculates how much she needed of uh, the NaOH a typical analysis takes about uh, yeah it takes about 48 hours to have a complete analysis report the most important ones we can get within 24 hours, I would say, and the 48 hours to have a complete analysis of what. Uh, I would like to explain you a little bit, to introduce you the menu from tonight. You know that Monastir also is on the coast, and you find in Monastir a lot of seafood and fish. So uh, we tried tonight also to make a menu with, uh, with fish, and a special thing from Monastir where you don't find anywhere in Tunisia. Some years ago, there is no, no separator. We separate by hand, like this. We separate by hand, like this. But we have the possibility also to work with two fats. Because here in this place, there is a problem to work with two fats. The problem is the pomace. Because the pomace coming out is very uh, humid. It's very humid, 60% humidity, so we cannot transport it. This is the problem in Tunisia. Oh, this is the first uh, uh, plant, is uh, crushing meat. Then we will go to the bottling meat, to the bottling plant, and uh, to the laboratory for the quality. the ground tank with ceramic like this ceramic. each one uh, can take 80 tons oh, well, 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 well. it's very nice a very nice oil very tasty and it's healthy also olive oil is the best